I'm here to do my June wrap up. It's very hot here. It's the beginning of July. There is a heat wave, so the window's open. So apologies for the background noise. I think we must be directly on a flight path here because there are so many planes at the moment, so you may hear a few of them. This wrap up is going to be split into two parts because I did read 22 books this month. The first book was My Fellow Skin by Erwin Mortier. This is a translated book originally published in Belgium and it is a coming of age tale. The protagonist is gay and it follows him coming to terms with his sexuality. So we start off with him as a child and then we go through to his school days and then onwards into his university days. The first part of it reminded me a bit of James Joyce in the way that language is used to show that he is a child. So if you feel like you can't really get into it, it does change after that. I did really enjoy this, although the ending let it down for me a bit. So I think I gave this three stars, maybe three and a half. And it's one that I responded very emotionally to. I don't know if that's just because there's a character called Willem and I kept thinking of Willem from A Little Life. In fact this book does have a bit in common with A Little Life. I think it's because of the way that it spans a life. And also some of the relationships reminded me of it a little bit. I'm not saying that it's anywhere near as good as A Little Life but this was an enjoyable novella. Then I read A Guide to Being Born by Ramona Osabel. This is such a great collection of short stories. This one had been on my radar for a wee while, partly because I'd heard people talking about it at the end of last year, and partly because it had come into the shop and has the most stunning cover. I feel like this book had just the right balance of whimsy and seriousness. As the title would suggest, it has a lot to do with birth, and also with death and it uses magical realism in really interesting ways so I would definitely recommend this as a fantastic collection of short stories. Next was a non-fiction, this is Sapiens, a book that I've been seeing around quite a lot recently. I think it's come out as a mass market paperback in the last month or two. This is a book that has just a huge scope of research, it's really really impressive. Because it is a history of humankind it covers lots of different academic disciplines, so really whatever you're into if you're more of a, a scientific person or you like anthropology or psychology there's something in here for you and it's really interesting the way that all of those things tie in together. Harari does an amazing job of just linking everything into this narrative that's really easy to read but also really informative. Then I read another novella in translation. This was Down the Rabbit Hole by Juan Pablo Villalobos. This is quite a dark and disturbing novel written from the point of view of a child. And this boy's father is the leader of a powerful gang. So he's surrounded by incredible wealth but it's an empire that's built on drugs. What's interesting about this is the level of understanding or the lack of understanding that this child has of the world around him. He lives a very pampered but a very secluded life and in the course of this novella his goal is to find a Liberian pygmy hippopotamus or get somebody else to find one for him. It's surprisingly humorous in places but in general it's pretty dark. Next was one of my favourite books of the month and this was A Place Called Winter by Patrick Gale. My colleagues at the bookshop where I worked in New Zealand are big Patrick Gale fans so they kind of got me onto reading his stuff and of course they were really excited when his new book came out and I've only more recently got around to reading this one. It's about a gay man in England, he has an affair with another man and there are a series of consequences from that including him having to go out to Canada in sort of self-imposed exile. This is around the beginning of the 20th century and it's quite an interesting time in Canadian history out on the prairies. There are lots of men there and not many women. This book is not big on female characters but the male characters are very well written and the storyline really kept me on my toes. I thought that I knew where the story was going but then it sort of turned around completely. I found it really surprising and really heartwarming actually. I think this was a fantastic read and if you haven't read it already then you should because it's wonderful. It may well be on my favourites list for this year. Then I read The Reader by Bernard Schlink. This is a story of a young man or a boy really who falls in love with this older woman. Their affair is the first part of the novel. It's set in Germany, that is quite important. And in the second part he is older and he's a law student. We have these trials where they are trying people who worked in concentration camps. The young man is a student so sitting in on these trials and one of the defendants ends up being the woman 
who he had the affair with. I think this is a really interesting way of going into some of these really philosophical questions about the war and a lot of moral questions as well. This is a book that really challenges you as a reader. It doesn't let you sort of just passively follow this story. So if you haven't read this book I would highly recommend that you do. And then we have The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. If you liked The Night Circus or Station Eleven you will probably like this, although I must say I enjoyed this so much more than both of those novels. It's beautifully written and has this really evocative landscape where the earth has been flooded and there are only a few islands left scattered across the ocean. Humans are basically divided up into two sets of people. There are those who live on the land, called the landlockers, and there are those who live on the sea, and they're called damplings. So this follows one character who is a dampling and one who's a landlocker. Both of them have potentially dangerous secrets. There are some really interesting power structures within these different communities and some fantastic plays on gender, but at its heart this is a love story and a beautiful one at that. The next book was Start of a Ten by David Nichols. I wasn't crazy about this one. The narrator is constantly putting himself in really embarrassing situations. Ever since I was a child I hate reading or watching things where people get into really embarrassing situations because I just cringe. I can't deal with it. I could never watch Mr Bean as a child because it just stressed me out. So there's quite a lot of that in this book so I didn't like it for that reason. I also didn't really like the fact that the protagonist is a bit of a misogynistic prick. And yes, there is some character development. And yes, I could empathise with him in many ways. However, I also don't like stories where there is a protagonist who is male, and then there's this beautiful, unattainable woman, and then there's the geek girl who is kind of your girl next door, and she's not so beautiful, but she's kind of clever, and we know that he's going to end up with her, of course, but he goes after the beautiful woman, and that's basically what this story is, so I wasn't a huge fan. <laughs> what I did like were the university elements. This is set at a university, so there are lots of literary references and things. That's always fun. But on the whole, this book wasn't for me. <laughs> the next book, though, made up for this because it was by Ruth Ozeki, and she's wonderful. This was My Year of Meats. Similarly to A Tale for the Time Being, you've got two female protagonists who are on different parts of the earth. One is this TV director and she's making this series about US meat which is to be sold to the Japanese market. The other woman is the wife of the first woman's boss. She lives in Japan and her husband is not a nice man. Because it's looking at the meat industry in the US, there are lots of moral questions raised. I didn't find it to be preachy though and I think a lot of people could find that a problem or have found it a problem. It didn't bother me but that might have something to do with the fact that I'm a vegetarian. The next read was a short story. This is by Philip Pullman and it's called The Collectors. This story is connected to the His Dark Materials trilogy. It's more or less a conversation between a couple of professors about this painting and a statue of a golden monkey. It's Philip Pullman's so it's brilliantly written. I think if this were in a collection of short stories then it would work much better. Yeah I just I just wanted I wanted more. So that's part of the reason that I'm revisiting the His Dark Materials trilogy but I'll get to that in part two. Final book for this part of the wrap up is Stoner by John Williams. This is a sort of rediscovered classic and it's set at a university so I thought great this is a book I'm going to love but sadly I didn't. I felt like it took a really long time for the narrative to warm up and for anything remotely interesting to start happening. So the first quarter to a third was extremely boring. And then I just found it really difficult to connect to this narrator. I don't mind if characters are unlikable. In fact, unlikable characters are usually much more interesting than likeable ones. But I didn't like this character for three reasons. One, he's just plain boring. Two, he is horrible and really apathetic towards his wife. And three, he seems to have very little agency in this novel. He just drifts through life and lets it happen to him and never seems to make any decisions of his own. Doesn't seem to care much about anything. And I was sort of waiting for some sort of passion to come up and there's only one point in the novel where it does and I just didn't get it. It's always really annoying when you think you're going to love a book and then you just don't. So maybe I should stop going into books with the expectation that I'm going to love them. Sorry to end this part on such a downer but we'll pick right up in the second part and you can hear the rest of the books that I read in June. Until then, bye. <laughs> Thank you.